Hi everyone, Tom and Taz here. For those of you who don't know us, we are both influencer marketing consultants at Elanisca. Uh, we help some of the world's largest brands to run targeted influencer relations programs. Um, we thought we'd do a video today as we were actually at um, an event yesterday put on by the Financial Services Forum, which focused on fintech and business banking revolution. Um, we thought it'd be nice just to share a few of the insights from the event and also link it to what we actually do at Elanisca. So the event yesterday brought the the good and great of the marketing and comms world, working in the financial sector. So we talk about how FinTech is changing the landscape and we changing the way that banks, certainly in the context of business banking, communicate with their customers. Uh, what we wanted to do was kind of share some insights from, from the event itself, but also talk about how there is a really good influence marketing use case here. Yeah. I think for me, one of the, one of the key insights that I took was around um, the sort of difference between the, the challenger banks, the Monzos, the Starlings that are popping up everywhere, and the traditional banks and the, the places they sit in the market. Um, I think it was interesting that um, the, the traditional banks have a lot of legacy uh, customers, a lot of incumbent customers, um, and obviously the, the um, challenger banks are really disrupting this. Um, and it's interesting that um, a lot of people think um, of going to the um, SME, particularly think of going to the traditional banks before they think of going to these um, newer challenger banks for, for lending. I think one of the things actually that um, was mentioned and, and something that they spoke about a lot was the fact that a number of banks don't get many people switching between them. So once you're in a bank, you're kind of stuck there and you, and you spend all of your time and all of your business life with one particular bank. So yes, there are challenger banks, and certainly for consumer banking and individual banking, they've been really, really successful. However, the challenge really now is how FinTech, and in particular challenger banks, are going to crack that legacy business and really kind of say to the small to medium sized business owner, you should come with us, you should do the bank for okay. us, and we will give you the same kind of path and ability to grow as some of the more legacy and some of the old habits that you're perhaps used to. Mm. And then um, two of the sort of key topics that were mentioned a lot yesterday were um, one was innovation. So how can the traditional banks really jump on innovation? Um, and you know, drive innovation in terms of the, the offerings they're putting out, the way they communicate with their customers, all of those different things. And I guess the way we relate that to what we do is helping those banks to find who are the key authority figures around innovation. You know, who's driving the conversation online? How can those people be uh, brought on board to help some of the brand messages around innovation and some of the banks that want to be leaders in that area? And secondly, it was around um, social responsibility. So there's a big push for banks to be much more honest and open with their, their customers and their SME um, customers uh, around you know, things like contractual agreements, um, around the, the, the partnerships they have set up. So there's a lot of um, social responsibility that needs to be done as well. And, and that's where I think Martin can come in that respect. Definitely. I think one of the, kind of the overarching issues was the case of loyalty as well. So we mentioned them in the video, they mentioned quite a lot in, in the session yesterday that a lot of people aren't switching banks, and that is because banks demand a degree of loyalty from their customers. And if you think about this, kind of logically, think about it naturally as well, banking is not a, a customer-facing process anymore. A lot of people do it on their phones, a lot of people do it over the telephone, or, like the majority of us, they use their laptops. And, and actually, a, a legacy bank demanding a certain level of loyalty means that actually they're going to give you something above and beyond. And, and really, I think where the challenger banks have been really successful is, is that they're, they're actually allowing people to be loyal to them by giving them access to their finances and giving them the greatest control of their finances through the app and, and through that functionality. So if you do look at the likes of the challenger banks, the, the likes of Starling, the likes of Monza, the likes of Revolut, they don't have branches, they don't have in-person locations for somebody to go. So that loyalty and, and all of that, that kind of um, drive and that, that ability to, to want to stay with those, those organisations is delivered through the user experience and the user interface that they've actually adopted. And again, if you think about the type of people that are using these challenging banks and that are more willing to, to use these challenging banks, they are the type that will have a following on social media. They are the type that will actually recommend those banks on social media to their peers. So again, building the business case for influence and marketing in the financial services profession certainly in the business bank profession, it's, it, I think it's, it's, it's time that banks, both legacy and new, started to look at the, the, the conversation and the influence that some of their actual customers would give them on our social media. Cool. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, and we're going to be doing another video on tech, which will be coming up soon.